my name is Bandu, and I am a devoted junior soldier of the Salvation Army, here in India. Today, I would like to talk to you about feet. I think one of the coolest parts about feet is how they leave prints in the sand that remind us of where we've been and where we're going. As Christians, the Bible tells us it is our job to make disciples of all nations. And in Romans 10:15, it says, And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. I have a friend who's going to help me bring some good news to you. <coughs> oh, hello, Nayati. I was just about to tell our friends here about Commissioner Frederick Booth Tucker. He lived a long, long time ago. <coughs> Long ago, Bandu, born to a family of wealthy leaders, it's no surprise that Baby Tucker would grow up to be a natural-born leader. His father was in the Bengal Civil Service, and his mother was a famous singer known as the Nightingale of Brussels. He was born in Mohir in Bengal on March 21st, 1853. He came from a long line of knights, esquires, captains, generals, governors, and judges. Whoa, 1853? That's like when the dinosaurs roamed, right? Ha 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 ha! Oh, Bandu, don't be silly. There were no dinosaurs alive when the commissioner was born. They died out eons ago. Baby Tucker grew up in India with his siblings and good Christian parents. He had a strong relationship with God. When he was young, his family moved to Europe. And at age 13, Tucker went to college. He studied hard and loved playing cricket and football. One day, he heard the great evangelist Dwight L. Moody in London preach, and it was in that meeting that the Lord called Tucker to serve. His parents weren't very happy, so he stayed in London a little longer and studied law. Good thing, too, because not too long after, he met Miss Louisa Mary Bode. They fell in love and got married. <laughs> Ew, gross! They returned to India so that he could join the family business. But while his friends had fun, Tucker's heart was for the Indian people and introducing them to God. Although he worked hard, he took every chance he could get to spread the good news to the people of India. That's right. He really wanted to know if it was possible to preach Christianity to the Indian people as an Indian gospel. That's such a cool idea. It's too bad not everybody was excited as he was about it. Lots of his friends told him he shouldn't be talking to the Indian people about God. And even the Indians didn't want to hear his message. But did that stop Mr. Tucker? Nope, not at all. And I'm so glad he didn't, because then we wouldn't have this chance to talk to you today. God is good. When Tucker first heard about the Salvation Army, he went back to London for his first army meeting. How cool is that? So there was Tucker in his first official meeting. Hello. It must have been amazing. After all, it was led by none other than General Superbooth. Look at my biceps. General Superbooth swooped in from the sky and... Oh, Bandu, General Booth was amazing, but he was not a superhero. Ah, uh, well, he could have been. After the meeting, Tucker went up to the general and asked how he could become a soldier. But the general told him he had a lot to learn about the Salvation Army. He needed to do his homework. Do homework. Tucker did exactly that and was accepted by the general. For a little while, Tucker was stationed in England, but his heart burned for India, and he convinced the general to let him go with a few others. My biceps. My turn. So they set sail for India with clothes like the traditional Indian fashion of the day and European boots, which looked pretty silly to the people of India. But they proudly marched on in Bombay with nothing but a tambourine and a cornet, passing out Hindustani hymn books. They made a lot of people mad, and they were arrested so many times. But that didn't stop them. It wasn't long before crowds of people wanted to hear what they had to say. Now here's where feet come in. So they wouldn't seem like strangers, Tucker and the officers got rid of their silly boots and decided to go barefoot on the hot Indian dirt. They even decided to live among the people. Eating with their hands, taking Indian names, and learning our many languages. They lived like the poorest of the poor. 
They lived as fakirs, wandering beggars who were holy people. They were welcomed into the homes of many poor people, preaching an Indian gospel, one that they could love and understand. But one place changed everything. Now, what did I do with that file? Is it here? Maybe it's here. Oh, here it is. Ta-da! Oh, hi, me. <laughs> now, where were we? Oh, yeah. The people at the village, Gujarat, kicked Tucker out, not wanting to hear what he had to say. So the gang left and slept under a tree, not too far away. Oh, hi, tree. <laughs> the villagers felt so sorry that they checked up on the sleeping fakirs. What they saw amazed them. Their feet were just like theirs. They were burned and scarred from traveling barefoot. Ew, gross! That's not what they thought. Because they saw that Tucker and his friends were living just like them, they were interested in hearing what they had to say. Their feet were the feet of good news, just like the Bible says. So they invited them to their village and gave them food and heard the good news about God. Well, that's all we have to say. See you later. Bye. <laughs>